The web design industry, it changes, it evolves rapidly. If you would have asked me two, three, four, five years ago what web designers need to learn to get started right now, well, a lot of the fundamentals will remain the same, but there are a lot of key differences. And that's what we're gonna talk about inside of this video. I'm gonna share with you seven areas that web designers need to focus on for 2025 and forward to future-proof yourself. And number seven on my list is the absolute number one focus I believe all of us should be prioritizing. You're gonna to wanna to take out your notebooks on this one. First up, my philosophy. Master one thing at a time, then move forward and master the next. This is a philosophy that I was taught by my first mentor that has guided me to a successful web design career. And since we're in the business of websites, it's important to master building websites. This includes learning HTML and CSS. I know we are in a time with amazing no-code tools and page builders with dragging and dropping, but still we need to understand how websites are built. What is happening behind the scene? If not, we are gonna be seriously limited on what we could do and how we could provide utmost value to our clients. Learning HTML and CSS is not that difficult. It doesn't take too long, but there is a learning curve and there are a lot of good free resources out there. My personal favorites and the ones that I learned off of was Scrimba and Code Academy. And taking time to master HTML and CSS is gonna have a significant impact on your web design career. Number two is to master a page builder. You want to get really, really good at a page builder, just choose one and master it. We are in an amazing time for page builders. I personally am a big fan of page builders. You have Elementor, Bricks, and Breakdance. Those are my three go-tos. Coming up soon, we are gonna have Divi 5, which is also gonna change things, and then we got Etch coming up next year. But for right now, let's look at what we have. We got those three, the big three, Elementor, Bricks, and Breakdance. Choose one and master it. Don't just start one and then move on to the next while you are halfway through your mastery. If you master just one of these, you are going to be able to build a successful web design business with it. You'll be able to create amazing websites with it and you'll be able to do it faster, more efficiently, and more confidently as well. Number three on my list is to learn Figma. And I know a lot of web creators in WordPress kind of recoil at this. I've seen it inside of a lot of comments and I believe this is coming from a very big misconception that Figma will slow down the web design project or it is going to make things much more difficult for you, but that's not true. There is a learning curve at first, but what ends up happening after you learn it, first thing that happens is you're able to build websites much quicker. Your web design process becomes much more streamlined. You're able to communicate better with the client and prevent a lot of that scope creep and redoing repetitive work. But also, this is where the biggest benefit I see comes from is that we are able to do more in our web design process, like creating graphics for our banners, graphics for our websites, customizing icons, customizing our images. We're able to do so much more in the web design process beyond just building high fidelity mockups. So get really good at that. In fact, I am in Figma every single day. I am in Figma more than I am in WordPress. And that is because I find myself doing everything in there, including my video thumbnails. My entire design process is all inside of Figma. Then I take that into my WordPress website and I'm able to do more creatively. And a quick thank you to Cloudways for sponsoring this video. I've personally used Cloudways for years while running my agency and WordPress maintenance plans. They're faster and safer than traditional shared hosting, and they make cloud hosting simple. With Cloudways, you could optimize performance while keeping costs low for you and your clients. Their Cloudflare Enterprise and malware protection add-ons delivers high-level security without the huge price tag. And their email management with an SMTP is made simple with no need to juggle multiple multiple third-party providers. Plus, you get advanced server options and 24-7 agency-level support to keep your sites running smoothly. And now Cloudways also has their new AI co-pilot, giving you AI-driven insights to boost your hosting performance. There's a special exclusive discount just for the Lightbox community. To get it, use the code Lightbox and the link in the description. Now back to the video. Number four on my list is a build it MRR, your monthly recurring revenue, and build it right away. Even if you are brand new, you have just started and you're still learning how to build websites decently. As soon as you start taking on clients, 
begin finding a way to build MRR, a monthly recurring revenue, and the best place to start is with WordPress maintenance plans and care plans. Odds are, if you are brand new, then your clients are mostly gonna be new businesses and small businesses. The thing about new and small businesses are that their budgets are low and they can't afford an in-house web developer. So by them having a web designer or developer that they could count on that is there and affordable for them with, you know, a hundred dollar or so a month monthly recurring revenue well they have their developer that they could count on they have you for support and they can make sure that anything for the website could be done they save a lot of money on not having to hire an in-house developer you make a lot more money by being able to build up that monthly recurring revenue from each one of your clients and then when you are doing that you're also going to be getting more repetitive business from those clients get started right away this was the number one mistake that i made when i started my web design business i waited way too long thinking i wasn't ready but really you can invest a few months into learning how to build a wordpress maintenance plan system how to put your plans together and how to deliver the learning curve really isn't that big and if you want to get a jump start i do have a course on building wordpress maintenance plans you can find it by visiting the lightbox community links for everything are inside the description of all my videos number five learning how to utilize ai it's no longer just a gimmick ai has proven itself to be really useful the tools are evolving they're growing really quickly now the thing is it is not about letting ai create our websites for us it's about using ai as a tool to improve our output improve our workflows and our processes start by focusing on automations look for the same tasks that you are doing over and over and find ways to utilize ai to automate we're still in the early stages of ai but it is evolving rapidly and it's super important that in our industry we stay ahead of ai and we evolve with it Focus area number six is learning additional skills. I mean, we first master building websites. We master our page builder, but we also need to learn how to add complementary skills to what we are doing. Our clients need more and put yourself in our client's shoes. When they need somebody to do something, say on their social media, maybe on their Google My Business, maybe they need some sort of automations done with their emails. Well, they kind of look at us first. They wonder if we could do it because we are the ones more technologically inclined to be able to deliver these kind of services. From our client's point of view, it is very stressful. It's very overwhelming to start to look for other people to do all these different services. They got to go on Fiverr, on Upwork. They got to go through the whole application process. And then there is a huge risk factor. If you are building relationships with clients, you have them on your WordPress maintenance plan or your care plans, you're giving them support and building these relationships and doing ongoing work for them, then learn how to do some of the additional skills you see that they need. This is one of the key differences from the last few years. The last few years, our economy was booming for websites. Now we have a lot more web designers and a lot less clients dealing with a difficult economy and other factors as well that have impacted our industry. So if you want to earn more and build a solid web design business, learn to do more for your clients, learn to deliver more value by solving more problems. The best way to figure out what skills should we be adding is just look at your clients, look at a common denominator across the type of clients that you are getting and then use my philosophy go ahead and master one of those skills one at a time and keep stacking them on top of each other when we are doing this we're building a skill stack that's what i call it we have our primary skill which is web design building websites but then we have our skill stack underneath which all complement each other and equal more value to deliver more problems that we could solve and if there is a service you see your clients that they need and you feel like this is just way over your head way above your skill range well this is where building a network is very valuable learn to connect with other web designers other web creators because we all start to develop different strengths and when your network grows then you're going to have your go-to people that you could connect with when your client needs something that is above your pay grade you know way above your head i get that all the time there are some things that are just way above my head but i know the right people to go to to help my client out and we could collaborate that's how we build networks and how we're able to do more for our clients and build a stronger web design business 
And that brings us to focus area number seven. I wasn't exaggerating. This is by far the most important area that we all need to focus on and probably the one area we neglect the most. And that's building our soft skills. I'm talking about sales, communication, project management. These are the most important skills that we need to learn, starting with number one, sales. And I know, ugh, icky, right? I know that's usually the first thing that we might think about or a creative might think about. We get that cringe effect when we think about learning sales. But sales, businesses can't thrive without sales. They can't grow without it. If we are building websites for clients and we are dealing with clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we need to learn sales so we can communicate, we can sell our services, we could position ourselves, and this is gonna be the biggest factor in growing your web design business. If we do not learn how to develop sales skills, we're always gonna be undervaluing ourselves, underpricing our services, and we're gonna be holding ourselves back. If sales is something you cringe at, it's one of your weaknesses, that is the most important reason why you need to dive in and learn this skill. You can start by reading books, listening to podcasts every single day, taking time, several months, just to focus on sales and understanding it. When you do learn sales, you're gonna learn other things like communication, which is very, very important, especially when we are behind a computer all day long. We need to learn how to develop those communication skills. This is how we manage our clients, manage our projects, set expectations and manage those expectations. Are you dealing with scope creep? Are you dealing with clients wanting to pay you very little? Are you seeing red flags and taking on the wrong clients? Well. All this is gonna be solved by focusing on building your soft skills. I truly believe this is absolutely the most important area web designers today and tomorrow need to focus on. These are my top seven areas of focus for web designers and web creators, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for a while. We must adjust and evolve to our industry. We can't keep doing everything the same. And if you want proof, just look back about four or five years ago. How many of us were using Theme Forest themes, custom build themes? How many of us were struggling with WP Bakery? And look where we are at today. Things change very fast and we gotta future-proof ourselves. Well, I hope this video Video helped and added a whole lot of value. And if you have any questions or suggestions for other web designers and creatives, please drop them inside of the comments. That way we could all learn and grow together. And if you did find tremendous value in this video, then don't forget that good YouTube stuff. You know what is up. Like and subscribe. I really do appreciate the support. Thank you for watching and I'll be back with another one.